Hello, my name is Arkady Itkin. I am an attorney in California specializing in corporate and employment law. I am sitting here with Greg, Gregory Finkelson. He is the president of American Corporate Services. His company specializes in corporate and uh, immigration law. Nice to see you, Mr. Finkelson. Yes, hello, Arkady. Uh, one of the very important things that uh, people who come to work in the U.S. need to know is that in most cases their relationship with their employer will be on the so-called at-will basis, right? Yes. And this means that an employee can quit at any time with or without notice and an employee can be terminated for any reason, no reason, with or without notice except for those circumstances where the termination is illegal due to alleged discrimination, retaliation, and a number of other limited circumstances. Is that right? Yeah, absolutely. Unless it's separately or different in a corporate uh, handbook. Can you please tell me a little bit about the work that your company does? Yes, uh, our company was formed uh, about 26 years ago, so we do, uh, we specialize in corporate law and immigration law. And corporate law, what we do, we form companies for our clients in the United States and abroad. And we provide secretarial services, uh, accounting, bookkeeping, taxes, and legal support. And talking about immigration law, we, we have attorneys who speak Russian and Chinese languages, and we provide all kinds of uh, immigration services for our clients. I hear people often ask the same questions, people who would like to come to the U.S. and work. They ask the same questions about different types of visas, and I would like f uh, for you to explain to us the, what, what each visa is about and what the, key difference, uh, what the key differences are between these different types of visas that could allow a person to work, to come to the U.S. and work. So, sure. First, uh, which visa would you like to talk about first? Uh, yeah, let's talk about L1 visa. Okay, please explain to us what L1 is. So L1 is uh, like a work, uh, work uh, business visa. So eventually if, for example, you have company in Russia or in China or in Ukraine, Kazakhstan, anywhere abroad, you can form a US uh, subsidiary office or you can purchase American company. And uh, you can transfer yourself or your key employees to work in your United States branch. And in such case, you will have uh, L1 visa, it's non-immigrant visa, it's a uh, uh, time-limited visa for up to seven years. And during the seven years, you can work in your subsidiary office in the United States. And with good news, your wife can work in any U.S. company on, without any limitations. Great. And um, what is the difference between L1 and EB1C or EB5? Can you talk about the differences between these visas? Yeah, let's talk about the difference between L1 and EB1C because they are kind of related. Please. Uh, eventually, to be able to apply for L1, you have several requirements. Requirement number one, your company abroad should be three plus years in business. And you're supposed to work in this company full time during at least one year uh, during the last three years. Okay. And third, you have to have uh, education related to the main uh, line of your business. Okay. If you don't have, let's say, complete education, you can have several courses, uh, university level or college level, plus work experience. It's also counted. Okay. So, this is a requirement for foreign company. Now, when you come to the United States to work, let's say, on L1, uh, requirements are not so uh, extensive compared to requirements for EB1C. For example, for L1, you can have a desk at office uh, business center and you can hire one secretary or maybe one manager it will be quite enough for you to to be compl in compliance with L1 visa requirements okay for EB1C uh, you have to
to show much bigger operation because the logic of EB1C is to show that you're extraordinary business person. Okay. And extraordinary, you cannot say that my salary is 50,000 annual and I am extraordinary, it sounds funny. Or if you have one secretary, it's always tough. So eventually for L1, you have to supervise managers and managers will supervise your employees. Okay. Compared to L1. And the most important, uh, EB1C is immigrant visa, so eventually you'll get green card. And L1, is, as we said previously, it's not immigrant visa, so you can stay here and work in your subsidiary office in the United States for seven years and go back. Is there any way for someone on L1 visa, is there any uh, route for them to become naturalized and to get a green card in the US? So if you are talking about uh, not, not naturalization through visa, this visa, this kind of visa, you have two options. First, you come here, you have little office, you have couple, two employees, and in a couple of years your business is growing, and you can apply for EB1C visa. Okay. And second option, uh, when you will get more capital, you can apply for EB5 investment visa. Okay. Great. Uh, this is a very useful information. Now, please explain uh, what H1B visa is. Uh, H1B is a work uh, visa. And so eventually, if you want to apply for H1B, you, you have to have an American employer who will like to hire you. So what's important with H1 is kind of lottery visa. So you can apply only once a year, usually it's April 1st of each year. And uh, you can st if you are lucky, you will be able to start working on October 1st. So if you, let's say, have a bachelor degree, your chances for to get uh, this lottery for H1B visa would be about 30%, 3-0. If you have master's degree, they have additional uh, placement, so your chances will be about 40%. But uh, we have many requests every day, by the way. So let's say I'm driver, truck driver, and I want to get H-1B visa. Or, you know, I'm housekeeper and I want to get H-1B visa. And eventually you have no chances for that. Let's talk let's say here in, we are located in Silicon Valley and you have some chances if you are IT specialist like say developer or uh, some IT professional with good experience mm -hmm. and if you speak English and if you come to United States because even though if you can speak English and uh, you are IT professional, high level IT professional you, you, you would not be able to go to the interview so, how can you be hired? Good point. And uh, is there anything that a person who is thinking about trying to get H-1B visa, let's say they have a bachelor's degree or a master's degree, is there anything else that they can do to maximize their chances of winning this lottery and getting this visa? Oh, so, they need to hire a professional attorney who will help them to complete this uh, petition for H-1B, otherwise it's could be complicated. But the most important, you need to find an American employer who wants to hire you. And let's say, if you have uh, agreement with employer, let's say in October. So now, this employer need to apply for H-1B petition on April 1st. So it's already six months waiting time. If you are lucky, uh, you will start work on October next year let's say 12 months from now. So eventually not every employer will be waiting for you for 12 months, also risking because it's still lottery, maybe you will, will come, maybe you will lose this lottery, who knows. So employer should be very kind of motivated to wait for you for 12 months or so. I'm sorry, uh, so you mentioned April 1st in October, which 12 months are you referring to? So, no, we started that if, uh, let's say, you get job offer, on October. In, so you get the job offer in October to start? No, you can get job offer, but you cannot start working until your visa approved. So from October to April, we need to wait because we cannot apply order. Okay. Six months, yeah? 
And after that, you need to wait until October next year to start working, if you're lucky. So the employer has to wait for at least a year after they make a job offer before you can start working? Uh, he can give you a job offer, but you cannot come earlier until you are approved and until October passed. And that takes about a year, right? Uh, let's say <coughs> if you get job offer on March, it will be from March until October. <laughs> as long as you get it and you apply before April 1st? Exactly. Okay. Otherwise, you need to wait another year. Mr. Finkelson, you've been in the industry for quite a few years, as you mentioned. I'm sure you see this people make the same mistakes over and over. If you had to mention a couple of mistakes that repeat themselves over and over that you think people should be aware of, can you talk about those? Yeah, sure. Well, let's start with L1. <coughs> so we have, like, uh, last week we had a client who, was, uh, who filed his L1 visa with some different attorney. And he came to us, oh, I want to switch to AB1C visa now, because I'm a great and very professional businessman. And we started uh, looking at his case. Eventually, he never paid salary for himself during last year. And this is uh, like very bad situation, because L1 is work visa, and you're supposed to work at least 40 hours per week, and you have supposed to pay salary to yourself. So if you have no salary, your visa, L1 visa, is under fire now. How can you switch to a B1C? So now we need to think with our tax professional how to fix his situation. We are working on it. Another problem that could be with L1 visa is when you come to the United States, get this L1 visa, but instead of working here on your American subsidiary office during uh, 40 hours per week, you went for six months vacation, or maybe travel abroad and work some, do some other business, and you're not in compliance with L1 visa requirements, because you're supposed to work at your office. Even though now USCIS, so they uh, check your, they can check your office, they can come without any call because they have your address and if you just see that you have no office or you have empty office so your application will be rejected. And does that actually happen? Do they come and visit? Exactly. It does? Absolutely. Wow. Okay. That's... So this was for L1 for example. Talking about H1B, uh, we had a client who was approved for H1B and after working several months <coughs> She decided go, to go back to China for a while, and she stayed in China about six months. And after that, she decided to come back and switch to switch her H-1B visa to another company. Okay. So it's kind of very complicated case, and I would not recommend such uh, tricks. So it's better to be straight and do everything by rule. So. What exactly is the problem with what she did? The problem is she got work visa, H-1B. You're supposed to work 40 hours per week during uh, several years, except of you can have some vacation, two, two, three weeks per year, but not six, six months vacation. So if you're not working six months, your visa gets uh, under fire and it could be rejected. And I assume if you're on work visa, and you leave for six months and you come back, the problems can start as early as at the airport. Hey, you have a work visa, why are you not? You know, here? eventually in the airport they don't know. <laughs> but, uh, uh, yes, you will have problem when you will extend your H1 visa because you need to extend it every, every year. So they're going to ask you, you've been absent for six months. What's up with your work, right? Yes, absolutely. Okay. If you had to give uh, a couple of critical points of advice for people who apply for either H-1B or L-1 or EB-1C or EB-5, any of those visas, what, is, uh, what, what could you say that would help them, that would guide them in the right direction and avoid maybe going the wrong direction? You know, if we will talk about all this visa in combination, I could give only one advice. Please. Advice. <coughs> so you need to be comfortable with your immigration attorney and make sure your immigration attorney speaks your language. 
So this is uh, the most important advice. But eventually I can give advice for any other visa. Follow the rules and don't do anything crazy. And follow, if you have any questions or uh, concerns, call your attorney. It's better to ask than make a mistake. Absolutely. You can do something wrong and sometimes it, uh, we will be able to uh, fix the situation, but in some cases nobody will help you. Well, thank you very much, Mr. Finkelson. It was a pleasure. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you.